Alright guys, how's your karmic again today? Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. It's roughly been three weeks since the Call of Duty World Championship and just now we have an idea what the top four rosters are theoretically looking like. But after that, who are going to be the big spenders? Boston Breach are apparently trying to form a team that can theoretically compete for championships here. They're offering big money around. Octane says that possibly Envoy was offered 400 Gs to join this roster on a yearly contract salary basis and turn it down to join Toronto. Pretty wild stuff. Is this true? What other players will they look to sign now instead if they've got this amount of money flying around and how can anyone else compete if they're also trying to form a team that can challenge the theoretical big four as it stands. Very much enjoyed to hear your thoughts in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I greatly appreciate it. Plenty to get into. We've got to mention first up that Vegas and London are not going to do anything for some time. As I say, the Torontos, the Optics, the Phases and the Subliners, we know what those four are doing. We think. Obviously things can still change. We're pretty Pretty sure we've got a good idea what they're up to. We've got eight more teams to figure out where their rosters are going to be and none of them are going to be the same as last year. That's pretty much for sure. Vegas will be a long way away. They always do this. They wait until the last minute and I imagine that the players on that roster, especially the likes of Clay and Temp, will hope that they can sign somewhere else and don't have to play for Vegas anymore. You know, somewhere with a facility would be nice, I guess, just as a starting point for those poor Vegas guys. London, I'm guessing, will be in a similar boat. I don't even know if they've got any real decision makers even hired over there anymore. So they're going to be a long way down the line as well. So that kind of leaves us with like six other rosters that will probably get things sorted over the coming month, I suppose. And some teams will move quicker than that. And there was some talk on the flank last night that effectively, since um, the top four teams have their team set, now the other guys are starting to move. Now, the other teams had good ideas what they were going to do anyway. But, you know, they had to basically wait on the big guns to get those deals done and now everyone else is going to start moving. Now, we'll quickly mention on the Miami Heretics, or probably still going to be just called the Florida Mutineers, at least for one more year. They're probably still going to do this Spanish thing. But I will say that Eric Boom, who was at one point linked to that roster, tweets he's in the UFA. So maybe implying that he's no longer going to be there anymore. There's talk about Real, who wasn't initially linked to that team, going there instead. But probably they're still going to do the Spanish thing, but it just won't necessarily be called Miami Heretics as we initially thought. So Optic are getting their team together. The rumours say that it's pretty much a done deal now, that Pred is certainly going to be there. I mean, he said he signed the contract a few days ago. And then Kenny being the other man, Look, it'd be nice if Scump came out of retirement. I don't think it's especially likely, unfortunately. But um, maybe we wouldn't want to see it. Maybe like, a, you know, what's passed should be passed here. And if the game isn't very good, as it probably won't be, then I don't think Scump really will want to return anyway. But there's been a little bit of talk about it, right? But Kenny is the option they're going for as that fourth player on the roster. And we'll talk later today about some more stuff around that Kenny optic situation and whether that's going to be good or bad. But Cheeky Bell basically says, yeah, this is a done deal. Thumbs up. Kenny to optic. They're locking it in. And when whether the contract has been signed yet, we don't know, but announcements will follow over the coming days and weeks, you would think. I mean, about now is really where we should start to see some announcements start flooding through the door on some of these top rosters. The Envoy situation, though, with the Boston Breach and then Toronto was a really interesting talking point, because initially, right at the start of this period, we heard rumours that Envoy and Optic had discussions. It makes sense. Players are going to have discussions with certain teams. Then the rumour was that Envoy was talking to both Boston and Toronto, and the question as well, would he go to Toronto if they haven't, you know, kept some of their big guns, scrappy insight clinics? Have they kept those guys around? Have they not? And then after all the dust settled, it seems like Optic Kenny is going to be coming true as well. So that leaves us with these four rosters theoretically as it stands. So Shotzi, Dashi, Pred, and Kenny, just to give you guys the rundown if you haven't been following over the last few days because there's been a lot going on. So you've got FaZe, of course, with Draza there instead of Slasher, selling him to the men he are theoretically. Then the Subliners roster, I mean, that's pretty pretty nasty on paper with Sib coming in, whether it actually works to be an upgrade and exactly what the reasons are behind that, whether you know, as I talked about yesterday, it doesn't seem to me that the Subliners boys, the three that are remaining, really were super keen keeping Priester around because if they were, they would have found a way to do it. It's very rare that World Championship winning teams split up. And then Ultra with Envoy coming in for Hixie. And on paper, this just is deadly, to be honest. Scrap was unbelievable this year. Insight Clinic's a great duo. And for all the talk with that Toronto camp, I think Ben said it quite well on stream last night, actually, because my understanding is that initially... 
some management people over there at Toronto wanted to make some changes. And they, I don't exactly know why, to be honest, their team was pretty good. They just grand final at champs. But, um, and then it became increasingly clear that that's probably not a good idea. And all the chaos was happening behind the scenes. They were tweeting all sorts of stuff, like Kleenex seemed to be tweeting as if he was gone. And, you know, Scrappy was tweeting as if either they, his teammates were going to go or he was going to get sold. And all this chaos was happening. And then quite quickly, it all calmed down. And I guess they decided, whoever was making these calls, then actually, the might not be the best idea and keeping those guys around and bringing Envoy in arguably I mean I think all these teams in some way it might have improved but the ultra thing feels like such a clear-cut upgrade that I'm really looking forward to seeing how this team will perform unfortunately for Hixie because Hixie comes in and yes look his numbers aren't great especially online but he did win the first ever land event he competed at the last player to do that was Scump ages ago so definitely a winning level player and I think Hixie turned up a lot in some of the bigger moments but he wasn't required to do much on the slaying department and he didn't do much in the slaying department and it gets to the point where we Will Hixie be heavily considered elsewhere? SMG talent is hard to come by, but if you are going to bring a guy like Hixie in, you need a proper slaying sub alongside him, and it's difficult to find those guys. So teams might prefer to go for two SMGs. They're going to do a bit more slaying than Hixie might, so difficult to see where he goes next. I think he can still get a spot in the league. Maybe it'll have to be on London or something, but yeah, we'll see how that goes for Hixie. But um, just the fact that Hixie is on the borderline of, will he get a spot? Is it going to be on a great team? And then Envoy is obviously going to be a top SMG. It just shows that on paper, Thieves have made some big changes here. Did also want to mention this, I thought was interesting. Now, Hook only played four matches online for Los Angeles Grillas this season. 74 rated, 0 0.90 across the board every gamer, which I thought was actually kind of impressive to do this, you know, so precisely. But then his numbers on Optic look like this. This is online, of course. Great in search and destroy, good in control, good in the respawns in general. 17 and 3 online. It just shows that, you know, a player in a different team environment playing with Shotzi can be a very different story. So this is the Optic only hoot cards. This is the LAG only hoot cards. But we now find ourselves talking about Envoy because he was on Optic in the past as well. Was replaced by Shotzi, let's not forget, a couple of years ago and had talks with both. This is on the 3rd of July. Boston and Toronto. But from what I'm told, he's most likely taking the Toronto offer. Now, what was the Boston offer? How good was it? Because the team that he was getting offered was Slasher, Ghosty, Snoopy and Envoy. That's a really nice team, I think, on paper. Yes, it's not quite the Toronto team. But if you're Envoy, you then had to weigh up. Do I want to live in Toronto, pay all the taxes and all this, and also potentially make less money than what Boston are offering, or even go back to Los Angeles Thieves with what they might be offering? That's what we're going to discuss now, and this is what Octane has to say. Preston's going to try to like go to Boston, because I feel like Boston's the next team that's throwing money. Because like LAT is, isn't... Uh, Boston has been like rumored to throw like 400 grand at uh, like Dill or something like that. Dill or, Dill or Dan, one of those two. So Octane's not exactly sure here how much money's on the table and exactly what their plans are. But I don't imagine if there's either of those two players, if it's one of Envoy or Ghosty that was offered 400 Gs, 400K to play for this roster, it's way more likely to be Envoy, you would think, right? Coming off Thieves, they tried to make sure that he's not going to go to Toronto because Ghosty, if he did, like Ghosty wasn't really getting offers from those top teams anyway. So, and also Ghosty's not a world champion. He hasn't won an event. I don't think he's going to command that type of salary that Envoy apparently can do. So um, this is like, these are big numbers, right? I mean, the first year of the CDL back in Modern Warfare 2019, teams were offering salaries like this. You know, the Seattle guys were all on like 300k plus, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not 100% sure, but I think that was the case. But over the last couple of years, it's generally calms down a bit outside of the real, you know, top teams, the phases, the New Yorks, you know, whatever. I mean, there was the rumor that Hydra was getting paid 500k. I'm not actually sure that's the case, to be honest. But um, still, like, that was the rumor that was going around at the time. And now, four, I don't know if this is like 400k over two years, or if it's just straight up 400k a year. Because if that's true, Boston are taking it super seriously, right? I mean, it's the Craft guys, right? Robert Craft and that over there. And they haven't won an event yet. They've got close enough, you know, a couple of top fours in there. They've looked all right at times, but they want to take that next step. And that seemingly is requiring them to pay big. But even paying big isn't seemingly enough at times. Offering Envoy a bag, and then he says no. Now, we don't know what Toronto offered him, but I'm pretty sure it was less than whatever, you know, that number that was just quoted there by Octane, what Boston offered him. So I think Toronto was less, but in Envoy's case, I think it probably makes sense. If it was a reasonable amount less, 
less and was you know not too uh, crazy different then um, I think the Toronto offer just makes more sense because you're more likely to win and that team you know is proven to be very good and it makes a lot of sense I think joining that team if you're envoy the thieves one is interesting though because this is what Ronnie says in reply to this comment near triple what LAT offered from what I heard so um, you know thieves potentially offered him what you know 140 something like that 150k or something and it's difficult because you know there's been mixed opinions on exactly how much thieves are offering nowadays whether it's even in the six figure ranges anymore because like they're not offering bare minimums but they're not offering anything spectacular and in Envoy's case it was pretty clear what he should do but still turning down an offer like that from Boston theoretically 400k makes you wonder what Slasher might be getting offered makes you wonder what Ghosty might be getting offered and also whoever their fourth is going to be because this is the rumoured team of four as it stands we talked about this yesterday now Scrim Intel says not Intel but Jacob Allen in the reply says you know interesting squad you put together there implying that it's very possible that this happens and this is the same team that Envoy could have been on but with Priester instead and as I said yesterday Priester on the sub would be a risk for sure whether that's actually going to work or not Slasher and Priester do have experience playing together on 100 Thieves when Slasher was pretty much the main on that team okay that was Black Ops 4 5v5 you basically had two mains with Slasher and Octane as it was back then but Priester was the grapple sorg the first man in the entry guy and he did a great job on that role that year Priester's super versatile just because he's been a flex the last couple of years or even a main AR it felt like at times on Minnesota Rocker and Vanguard at least like early on in the season he can still run an SMG I think can he do it on a great level difficult to say is he the best option out there for an SMG possibly because you know if you're going to partner with Snoopy and you think Snoopy's going to be the next Shotzi or the next real top SMG in the game and he's got the potential to do that you probably want a partner to him with a bit more experience rather than bringing in another you know young rookie player who potentially there's going to be some inconsistencies there so I quite like this idea from Boston but they're going about this in a very gung-ho manner right and the question is do they even need to offer salaries to this level are there other teams out there that actually are going to be competing for these players with those type of salary numbers like you look at the teams outside of the top four surge I don't expect them to be paying anything massive anymore maybe Rocker again because Rocker spent a lot of money on their team last year the rumor was they spent like what 1.8 million to form that team for last season with buyouts and contracts and everything like that and if they do partner with G2 which is getting closer I believe to a done deal then maybe they've got even more money there so they can throw some money around but it's interesting because that offer that was rumored that Hydra is going to be offered like 500k or something and then because I'm not exactly sure that happened just because there were other spots that then fell through and he didn't end up joining Optic for example so I'm not exactly Exactly sure it was necessary to pay that salary because there wasn't necessarily the competition for him so uh, very interesting if Boston are doing this but the team they're forming right there's always a team out there in the league that will overperform expectations I doubt that like look there's no way that this top four is going to be the top four teams every event they will be probably sometimes right they will be the four teams on Sunday but there will be occasions probably one of these teams is worse than we think and probably one of the teams outside of the top four is better than we think Boston are trying to be that team and they're spending money to achieve it but very interesting if true that Envoy's turning around that level of salary in order to join a Toronto team that he clearly has a lot of confidence can achieve great things very much interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time